Hi, my name is Jane Doe, and my lifeless body was found off a busy highway. No one knows who I am or where I came from. My family never identified me, and my killer has never been brought to justice, and it's been nearly 40 years. My body was buried, but my soul has yet to rest. Somewhere out there, someone knows who I am and who did this to me. I did leave a few clues behind. Perhaps you can help me so I can finally rest. Sheriff's Office hopes social media can help them solve a case that has gone unsolved, but investigators do not know her name, calling her only Jane Doe. Nearly 40-year-old cold case. It's been very hard for us to not have any movement with her case because of the fact that we have a facial photograph of her. Missing persons is something that we see every single day, but what if it happened to you or someone that you love? Well, the story that I'm about to share with you is of a real life Jane Doe that happens to hit really close to home for me personally. Imagine living your life, going to work, going to school, having fun with your friends and family, and then one day you vanish. No one knows who you are. Nobody can identify you. Those friends and family that you had never even claim you. And before we get into those possibilities, I have to share with you what happened. On a cold winter morning, December 6, 1983, a truck driver who was on his way to work on Route 17 looks out of his window to see a woman laying face up in a ditch. The bit of clothes that she did have on were soaked in blood, and it appeared that she had multiple gunshot wounds. She had no shoes on, no jewelry, no purse with a driver's license inside. She had no identity and no one thought that it would remain that way for 39 years. If you follow my vlog channel, a lot of you know that I purchased a home in this part of New York that I used to live at some years ago. This story has always stuck with me over the years and I felt a strong urge to do something about it. Something that I can do to bring more attention to this unsolved mystery. The FBI and Sheriff are still strongly working on this case, believe it or not. Now, one thing that they didn't have back in the 80s and 90s was social media. Investigator Christy Lyon started a Facebook page to help with this case, and a lot of people have been very helpful. Even though it only has about a thousand likes, there has been so much support surrounding this Facebook page. This brilliant idea to start this Facebook page to help identify the Jane Doe of Chautauqua County came to Christy Lyon after connecting with police in Louisiana after a cold case, similar time frame too, went unsolved for so many years. Her name was Bozier Doe because she was found in Bozier Parish, Louisiana. And just like with our Jane Doe, she was found in the early 80s, no identification, no personal belongings, but that all changed November 2014 when a DNA profile was released to the media. After that, a Facebook page was dedicated to Bozier Doe. And just six days later, somebody connected the case to a Florida teenager who went missing in 1979. Now, Lion is hoping for a similar success story to our Jane Doe of Chautauqua County. While in New York State, Tiff and I decided to go visit Jane Doe and pay our respects. made it to Sunset Hill Cemetery, not far from Jamestown, New York. I thought this was gonna be a really small cemetery. As soon as I got here, I was like, we have a problem. It is gonna take forever to find Jane Doe here. Now, the good news is, is all the snow melted. We're kind of like in the springtime right now. They did have a major snowfall. I may get lucky. They have an office right there and they don't close until five. So let me go inside and see. Thank God I went in there. Did you get information? So the office was open and they gave me an actual map 
like you can see it says Jane Doe and we have her exact coordinates of where she's buried I asked do people come visit Jane Doe often and she said no and that she was surprised just last fall the local paper did an article on her and the person that runs that Facebook page actually is someone who works for the police department and she's trying to like solve some cold cases this is a real popular cold case I'm glad we didn't have to go searching I mean I've gone searching for graves in the past before and I mean a big place like this it would have been really hard Blaisdell deal deal I don't know and then Gra that's where 115 Blaisdell deal so it's gonna be right around here somewhere I'm not finding it no they I mean they gave oh there it is there it is oh my gosh it's so tiny look at that this is where she was buried so sad can you give us some answers please I just I pray to God that we could solve your I'm so sorry what happened to you oh they say that the dead can speak from the grave sometimes we really need you to speak for us today and help us out try to get this to reach parts of the world that may have a woman missing for so long it's been almost 40 years now this happened i was only one years old the lead investigator that reopened this case she was five years old so she's trying to get this solved too we did try to reach out to her to see if we can do like an interview and we're still waiting to hear back hopefully we get in touch with her well apparently from what this thing said is that this case was never rested it's never even been sat long enough to to collect dust she was just the new investigator that took over from the retired investigator that was leading no the it, case. it did I, I read on another article that i think in it they stopped i mean it was like in 2004 or something like that and then she reopened it some years later because this was a very popular cold unsolved case oh well, on that facebook page it says that it never rested i don't know it, it was, could be some you know how things get kind of thrown around here and there but um i want to help her out i want to help her out and there's a family out there somewhere and that's what makes this so unique for me and for tiffany and for many others where are they at they have to be mourning somewhere we're gonna see what we could find we need your help please we need your help really nice of the you know the locals here they gave her a proper burial she probably had a mini ceremony but there's not a doubt in my mind that one day they're gonna dig this body back up and try to get some more answers with the technology that we have today I don't know see what we can find it was heartbreaking seeing this simple bronze plate that read Jane Doe 1983 and it was also a reminder her death is still unsolved to this day and I mean while looking around this cemetery which was beautiful by the way i couldn't help but notice my beloved mother loving father i mean those are things that you read on a headstone and i couldn't help but feel this emptiness for this woman that has been unidentified like where's her family where's her friends her co-workers is there anyone out there that misses her there has to be this is what we do know about her and some of the clues that she left behind she was a white petite woman, five foot four, about 128 pounds. She was between 30 and 37 years old. There's a lot of reports saying that she was in her late 30s. I may even throw in maybe early 40s. And she had been laying for about 24 to 36 hours. Now, the only reason why they didn't find her during that time is because, you know, it does get pretty snowy in that part of New York. They get a lot of lake effect snow and there was snow on top of the body up until it rained and kind of thawed it out. I mean, for all we know, it could have been even longer that her body was there, but that's what they're saying between 24, 36 hours. This may be a little bit graphic for some, but after they examined her body, you know, the autopsy report did show that she was pulled by four wounds. She was shot in the chest. There was even a report of saying that she had been shot in the mouth. And what makes things really sad is that she was shot in the back, which means that she was trying to escape her attacker. 
and this was all done by a large caliber firearm like a 357 or 38. She had brown eyes, a wart over her left eye, and a mole behind her left ear. She did have a scar on her throat, which is pretty interesting and sad to me because that means that she may have had some abuse in the past. Another thing that was pretty interesting was they believe she may have had a child. The child that she bared had to have been 15 years. This is what they estimated from the time of her death. And that means that there is somebody out there around 55 years old or so that is missing their mother. I have no idea how they found this information out, but hey, we'll leave it to the professionals. They say that she did have a child 15 years before her death, so hey, I'm believing it. But how could someone not be looking for their mother? I mean, there has to be somebody out there. I mean, I know if I didn't have a mother growing up, or maybe I was told that something happened to my mother, she disappeared, I would be on a constant grind trying to find my mother. Maybe this child was put up for adoption and never knew that they were missing a mother. And something that I pray didn't happen to is that maybe this person is missing and maybe that's why they haven't gone looking for their mother. Well, Jane Doe didn't match any missing persons descriptions out there. Investigators believe she may have been of European descent based on these factors. One, she was wearing a V-neck camisole, which was made in Italy and at the time was not available via export. Two, she had an IUD, which is a form of birth control, and at the time it was not available to the United States, but however was made and distributed in Canada and available to a couple European countries. Canada is not that far from this part of New York State, which also led police to believe that this woman was not local. Three, she had very expensive dental work done with gold fillings. Now I know what you're thinking. If they found teeth, they obviously can look up dental records and things like that, right? Well, here's the thing. Not only did the FBI and Interpol send out dental records, they sent out fingerprints, I think even DNA, to Canada and several European countries, some of which even published the story in local magazines, and all that came up empty. But the strangest thing is what was found in her trench coat pocket. A handwritten note from a Vancouver hotel notepad that remains a mystery till this day. It's unclear what the meaning of these enigmatic numbers and letters signify, but many, including police, have had their own theories without any solid leads. Now you know how we go to hotels and they usually have these little notepads and they're marked up top with the hotel name? Well, what this note was written on was stationary from the Blue Boy Motor Hotel, and that was in Vancouver, British Columbia. Investigators did get in touch with the hotel and even interviewed several people and no one remembered seeing anyone matching the description of Jane Doe. Okay, I was getting ready to leave and I felt it wouldn't be right to leave without leaving Jane Doe a gift. This is a crucifix that was given to me. I've explored a lot of crazy places using this crucifix right here. Now, if you happen to come by Jane Doe's grave, Please do not remove this because I want to personally pick this back up when Jane Doe's is solved. All right, my friend, this is for you. We will see you again one day in heaven. But for now, let's get some answers for you. She was in New York State or where she came from. Police believe because she was found on the side of the expressway she may have been traveling with a truck driver. Witnesses from a local truck stop along Interstate 90 after being questioned did confirm that they did see a woman that matched Jane Doe's description. One service station near Northeast Pennsylvania also claimed to see a woman who matched Jane Doe's description the day before, meaning that she was traveling east. Now one thing Tiff and I noticed right away when we visited the exact area where she was found is just up ahead was a way station and I couldn't help but think what if this person wanted to get rid of her body quickly before getting to the way station if you're a truck driver you know you got to hit those way stations they're very strict about weighing your truck to make sure you're not overweight on your load sometimes there's cops there maybe that's why they were keeping this woman prisoner they probably assaulted her and they thought hey I need to get rid of her now it did make us think being that she's never been identified that really kind of sticks with you because you would think this day and age somebody's got to miss her somewhere I don't know how much 
we can do going to the site where Jane Doe was found, especially some 40 years later. But I want to get a visual, Tiffany wants to get a visual of the area that she was found in. There's some speculation as to her being, maybe catching a lift as a hitchhiker from someone. Maybe she was in a truck. She was shot in her back, so she must have been running away. This is a busy highway known as Route 86. Back in the day, it was Route 17, right? Mm-hmm. So we're on West Main Road right now. I started comparing the pictures that I do have of the area where Jane Doe was found. And I thought this was it right here, kind of judging off of where I see the power lines. But then I noticed it's not, it's actually down there. And you can kind of see the similarities here to the railings. And of course, there's no railings on this bridge behind me. There's actually some signs that still say 17 as well, but it's 86 now. That's where we're at right now, West Main. And that's where the railings are. So it's like right down here where we need to be. Yeah. The pictures show power lines. So I am probably 98% sure that it's right, right down there, which we could walk from here. Well, we're gonna, just gonna slide down the hill on our booties. Sure. On the way to a truck inspection. Oh. Makes you wonder if they had to get rid of the body before they went to get their truck inspected. You think those truck inspections were around in the 80s? So right here is where you're where you need to stop. Okay. Yep, a mile and up. Yep. That's where we need to be. Okay, this looks more like it if you look at this picture and compare the two. This definitely looks like the, the bridge. I think that's the original bridge too. Yeah. It's got the, the same railings. This is the general area where Jane Doe was found. According to the pictures that Tiff and I studied, it was right over here. The body was covered in snow. For two to three days. Yeah. I mean, it could have been longer too. Not far from the crime scene, you can see an actual sign where it says trucks must exit. So maybe it was a truck. Maybe she hitched a ride with someone. I mean, in 40 years, it looks like maybe we got some more trees, but there's the power lines right there. Now, in case you're wondering, this goes to Jamestown. I'm not sure what's beyond Jamestown on Interstate 86, but that's what's down the road from here and of course a rest area and a truck stop so i don't know if that helps us out with our clues maybe the killer was a truck driver a lot of trucks come through here but that's where we were just a little bit ago up there these ditches are deep yeah they are pretty deep even in the pictures though you can see where there's two hills that separate when we solve this case and i mean i am that confident that we are going to solve this case when i say we i'm not just referring to Tiffany and I, I'm referring to you, because you're gonna help us. We're gonna come and put a memorial marker in Jane Doe's honor. Hopefully we could find her real name. I hate even referring to her as Jane Doe, but that's that's what she's known as here, locally. But we're gonna, we're gonna give her a proper headstone and we're gonna put a memorial here where she was found almost 40 years ago. And we're not being cocky, we're just trying to speak it into existence. That's right. was serving a 1200 year sentence. Yeah, you heard that right. 1,200 years. 
behind bars. He went to prison for robbing and shooting someone and during his prison stay, he started bragging about how he was responsible for Jane Doe in Chautauqua County. Now, when detectives got a hold of this, they thought, hey, well, we need to question him. So lead investigator Randy Vandershoff, he's so excited that he finally has something on this case that he's been working so hard on. He makes the trip from New York State to Oklahoma to meet up with this inmate and after a short time, he realizes this is not my guy. Everything that he knows from this case is from the magazine. Now you can imagine how frustrating this had to have been for Vandershoff. There was also this woman from California that claimed that Jane Doe was a friend of hers from Toronto. When it came time to meet up with her, she was a no-show. This Blue Boy Motor Hotel stationery was shared onto the Facebook page and a lot of people shared their insights of what it could have been. Some saying that it could have been area codes, maybe even a phone number. Back in the day, you had to enter certain numbers, especially for European countries. Could have been that. Some even saying that it could have been mileage. A lot of people have their own theories on what this may mean. Let me know here in the comments what you think. Perhaps it's really valuable to this case. Now on this Facebook that Christy Lyons created, a woman came forth just last year claiming that this could be her missing mother and she was from Montreal. There was a resemblance to the pictures of her missing mother and our Jane Doe. This woman's name was Elizabeth Sitta. After doing DNA tests with the daughter of Miss Sitta and our Jane Doe, sadly, the test came back negative. Please, if you can, say a prayer for that family as well, that they get some justice and get some closure on their mother's disappearance. There's nothing more frustrating to a detective that after several years of working this case, traveling from city to city, just on one case to bring closure to a family and still be empty from all the work that they've done. That's what happened to Randy Vandershoff. If you committed this crime and you're not coming forward, think about the family members that need closure, that have been suffering over the years because of you. Well, I think if somebody can do that, I don't think they care about what the family's going through. What I say is, think about your judgment day, if you haven't already met it. Someone out there has a mother who's missing, a daughter, perhaps a sister, or even a best friend, that to this day does not have any peace, that deserves justice for what happened to the person that they loved. I know some of you out there are super intelligent, when it comes to your investigating skills. Maybe you could help us crack this cold case. Perhaps some of what I share today inspires someone to make a Facebook of their own in a different language, maybe Italian, German, or even French. Maybe that's what's been separating this for so long is the language barrier. Please help bring this poor soul some peace and many out there some closure. I encourage you to join the Facebook group. I'm going to leave links down below. Be active here in the comments. Any information that you may have, let's come together as a community and help solve this case. Share this video with everyone that you know. Maybe you can translate it in your native tongue. There has to be somebody out there that knows this woman or even her killer. And if you want to go a step further, you can reach the Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office at 716-753-2131. Thanks for watching. Give me a kiss. Peace.